decided to go ahead and do the best I could with what I had. And finally got discharged out of the hospital. Had no idea how to use a cane or what to do, anything along that line. And came back from Wichita because my sister lives here. And came back here and uh, they sent me to Heinz Hospital in Chicago for rehabilitation. And I got up to Heinz Hospital and they taught me to travel with the cane and, and they put me in there and I got with the program and in no time at all I was traveling all over Chicago with my cane and riding the L's. And, well, they taught me Braille and uh, they taught me how to adjust the blindness, what to do with it, how to approach people with it, and... What type of things did they tell you about? Well, you know, sighted people don't know the first thing about blindness. And so the blind person's responsibility is to put them at their ease and alert them, hey, I'm blind and I've got some problems, but I can handle them. And that would put the sighted person at ease. And how big of a huh? turning point? How big of a turning point in your life was was this stay at the hospital there? Oh, it was everything. It it, it gave me a purpose for for going ahead and living and and the training I got prepared me to run a canteen in the telephone building, which I was very successful at. So then you even got a job. Oh yeah, got a job and and uh, tell I was useful to society again. But the people at Heinz were just wonderful. I had some interesting experiences in traveling. Oh, I bet. We'll talk about a couple of those for you. Well, this lady was a huge lady, and she had gone into the store and gotten a package of these. Sushi so covered with soda nut, you know, soft sushi covered with soda nut. And her shoe would come untied. And she would bend down over the, on the middle of the sidewalk uh -huh. with one knee down, trying to tie her shoe. Okay. Well, I was bouncing along with my chain, you know. And I bounced on this side of her and on that side of her. And the next step I took was right in the middle of her back. And she just went flat on the sidewalk. And so as I was wiggling around on the blubber that she was and thought, I'm going to fall off here. I've jumped off. And I reached down and got a hold of her arm and tried to help. My oriented was back there watching all this, just dying laughing. <laughs> and I got that lady up on her feet, and I was terribly sorry. And she had just taken one of those something like sisters. And her mouth was full of children. And she uh, and just spit children all over me. And he stood back there and just cracked up laughing. A well-developed sense of humor is the pole that adds balance to our steps as we walk the tightrope of life. The only courage that matters is the kind that gets you from one minute to the next. For 58 years, LT lived in a world devoid of light. It wasn't until Veterans Day 2007 that LT was able to reach out and see his beloved country's flag. Thanks to one man and his vision for the blind, LT was able to touch and commemorate the flag that symbolically seized his sight. It has an impact on my life in, in the point that I can show it to people that come in, uh, the Braille flag and the Braille and what, how we use it and this sort of thing. And the fact that I'm just like that mother. When I get depressed and think things are going to hell in a handbasket, well, I can go in there and feel that flight and think, ah, maybe it's not so bad after all. Maybe, maybe this country is better than I think it is. And so it reestablishes my connection with the nation and the symbols that are so important to our nation. And that's how I knew it would be. Uh, it's just something, a, a wireless blanket, something when I get depressed I can go between my senses. Inventor Randy Cabral, founder of the Kansas Braille Transcription Institute, had a vision for the blind because he too had been touched 
by a blinded veteran, his very own father. In 2005, Randy committed himself to give something to his father that had never been done before. His vision was to create a flag that the blind could see. After months and months of trial and error, the tactile Braille flag began to take shape. Soon, Randy was traveling the country dedicating Braille flags to veterans that lost their sight. There was even a dedication ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. I had a friend of mine that was in Arlington National Cemetery, and he told me, he said they just dedicated two Braille flags to the flag in Arlington National Cemetery, and he said it was the most touching ceremony I've ever seen. And we'd known each other for ages and done things together and uh, traveled a lot in the DAV. And, you know, it wasn't a... He said, I just stood there and bawled.